You will never have all that God wants you to have in the new season if you aren't faithful to past seasons. It's not about how good you are. It's about the blood of Jesus. When he shed his blood, he knew you wasn't going to measure up. He knew you weren't qualified. He knew you were going to fight your flesh. It is a once and for all payment. Your sin debt has been paid. The old way of doing things isn't going to work anymore. The old covenant laws aren't going to save you anymore. Now there is a new covenant taking place. It has everything to do with the sovereignty of God and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Not your own strength, not the laws you keep, not the religion you uphold. Everything is about grace from this point on because Jesus reconnected us to a kingdom that cannot be shaken. He reconnected us to our original intent and purpose. He gave us access into the king's kingdom. The following program is made possible by the partners and friends of Ronnie Phillips Ministries International. You were created to be more than you are now, to love more than you love now, and to live a life that's fully alive. Take a few minutes and join Pastor Ronnie Phillips for a message of grace that will help you live fully alive. Greetings, partners and friends. It's Pastor Ronnie Phillips, and you are watching Fully Alive. Thank you for tuning in with us today. Today, I want to teach you about one of the two ordinances in the church, communion. I love the word communion more than the Lord's Supper, but it doesn't matter which terminology you use. We're talking about the blood and the bread. And I still believe it is indeed the meal that heals. So watch this teaching on the bread and the blood and be healed in the name of Jesus. I want to teach a little bit on Passover this morning before we take of the bread and of the wine. As many of you may or may not be aware, the children of Israel were suffering under the slavery and persecution of Pharaoh. Pharaoh was a wicked ruler, and God called this refugee on the run, hiding from his past sins, to go redeem and rescue his prized possession, the children of Israel. That man's name was Moses, and he was raised in the court of Pharaoh, raised to be an Egyptian, but he was one of God's precious people. And when he came to maturity and saw one of his covenant brothers being beaten and humiliated, he rose up and murdered an Egyptian and was exiled. And in God's sovereignty, A burning bush came to him that would not be consumed and God spoke to him and said, it is you that I've called to rescue my people. And like many of us whom God has called, Moses said, are you sure it's me? I'm not qualified, I stutter, I don't even speak that well. And he said, no, I am. And because I am, you're going to do what I've predestined you to do. And you will go to Pharaoh and you will say, let my people go. And over that course of time, there was a battle going on between God's spirit and his sovereignty and Pharaoh and his evil magicians. And there were 10 plagues. You've heard of those plagues. Frogs and gnats and disease and all of those And the first nine were really more about aggravation, but when the 10th plague came about, it got very serious because this 10th plague was going to directly affect the house of Pharaoh. See, wicked rulers will continue to be wicked until the consequences hit their house. And these consequences were horrendous. The death of the firstborn, which would mean that Pharaoh and his successor and the legacy that he had dreamed about would be demolished. All of these things happen and in the midst of this, God in his sovereignty implemented 
Passover, Passover, Passover. It was Passover that Jesus was celebrating in the upper room with his disciples when he implemented the new covenant of communion or the Eucharist or the agape meal. You will never do a new thing while dishonoring the old thing. You will never have all that God wants you to have in the new season if you aren't faithful to past seasons. And Jesus honoring the tradition and honoring what the church and religion celebrated for years and years was having Passover, the Seder feast, with his disciples. Passover, number one, signified a new beginning. A new beginning. We've had Seder feast as a church many times. I've done them for Ronnie Phillips Ministries International. I know my father's taken part in many, Dr. Collins and others. And we've even celebrated in our home with our children, especially during the pandemic. We had on Zoom uh, family members and we took communion together and we celebrated the Passover Seder meal at our house. It was a lot of fun and very special, a special memory. But you know on that Seder plate you have a shank bone which represents the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. You have wine, the four cups of wine. You have uh, the bitter herbs which represented the slavery that the children of Israel experienced you have the afikoman, which is broken, and then, of course, it's hidden, and then you have the egg and the carpus. You have four different cups of Passover. But whenever a Jewish family celebrates Passover and they take of the Seder feast, it represents a new beginning, a new year, a new season that God is doing a new thing, amen? Understand that God is always into the new thing. He is not living in yesterday. We as human beings and we as people uh, encamped by religion, we, we like to live in the past, but God is always doing a new thing. In fact, he even told Moses in the old covenant, he said, I'm so far ahead of you, all you can see is my backside. And we, we think we're being a pioneer or we're, we're, we're breaking new ground. God's so far ahead of us in the kingdom. We need to catch up. But in Exodus 12, this is what it says, and that's our text for today, Exodus 12, if you have your Bible. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. He goes on to give instructions for the Passover. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So God is doing a new thing. Everybody say new thing. Number two, Passover required the offering of a lamb. We've been teaching on Revelation on Wednesday night, and we know that Jesus was and is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. He died for our sins. And everything in Passover, everything that has to do with the blood on the doorpost, has to do with the blood of Jesus Christ that would be shedded for us on Calvary, on the cross, so that we would be forgiven now and forever. It says, speak to the congregation of Israel saying, on the 10th of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons who could share in eating this lamb. According to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. So the lamb first had to be unblemished unblemished, without sin, without spot. Sound like someone you know, Jesus. He took our sins on his back, but never sinned himself. He was fully God and fully man, but he knew no sin. He was unblemished as a human being. This lamb was kept as a pet for three days. Could you imagine the children in the house? They petted the lamb, they got close to the lamb. Some may have had some kind of attachment to the lamb like we do our pets. And then all of the sudden, 
The father comes to the children and says, hey, it's been three days at twilight. We've got to kill this lamb. There's a purpose for us to kill this lamb. Could you imagine the response that the children would give their father to know the little pet they had gotten so close to would be slain? And then during this 10th plague, in order for the children of Israel to be kept safe, the death angel needed to pass over. So here in Exodus 12, it says that they were advised in verse seven to take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they would eat this. So it's very interesting. They put the blood on the doorpost shaped like a cross. Do you understand that Jesus had not been crucified yet? He hadn't even been born yet, but this was a prophetic sign of that which is to come. Everything in the old covenant always connects us to the new covenant. That is why you can't deny or get rid of the old. Jesus came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. And he is the fulfillment of all things. This lamb had to be eaten according to verses eight through 10 in Exodus. None of it could remain until the morning. That which remained had to be burned with fire. The blood of the lamb protected the children of Israel. It provided for the children of Israel and it prepared them for the promised land. Verse 11 through 13, and thus you shall eat it with the belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. In other words, you should be prepared to move because when you finish this meal, we're not going to rest on the fact that we've commemorated and celebrated. It's time to move on to that which God has for us to do. So today when we take of the bread and wine, we're going to remember, we're going to commemorate what Jesus has done for us. We're going to celebrate. We're going to believe God for his healing. But after we leave here, we're going to get busy in the kingdom of God. We're going to get moving, sharing our faith, loving our neighbor, and lifting up the name that is above every name. Verse 12, for I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. I've been teaching you on Revelation that he is a God of grace. And even during the seven year tribulation, there will be many opportunities for grace and there will be second and third and fourth and thousandth chances for people who have denied Jesus. Even during the tribulation, people have an opportunity to get saved. But understand this, he is not only a God of grace, he is a just God and he is a God of judgment. And if you play with God long enough, judgment will come. Now the blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you are and when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. The blood goes on cleansing us from all unrighteousness. There can be no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. The blood is what keeps us going. The blood is what we celebrate today. The body that bled and the blood that goes on cleansing. Many years ago, Dr. Collins and I were throwing sermon ideas around and we learned about the pitch that the ark was stained with. And that pitch was kind of like you'd stain a fence today. Women would use that pitch as makeup, but when they stained that ark to keep the water from penetrating it, if you had a bird's eye view of the ark, it would look like a red stained piece of wood. So the vehicle God used to save humanity was a red stained ark of wood. But that led to the other vehicle God would use to save us spiritually, and that is 
a red soaked cross that Jesus died on. It's interesting whether it's the Passover lamb or Noah's ark or the cross of Calvary, it's all about the blood of Jesus. It's not about how good you are. It's about the blood of Jesus. When he shed his blood, he knew you wasn't going to measure up. He knew you weren't qualified. He knew you were going to fight your flesh. It is a once and for all payment. Your sin debt has been paid because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, number three, was the fulfillment of Passover. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Paul would say, purge out the old leaven that you may be a new lump since you truly are unleavened. For indeed, Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. When John saw Jesus coming towards him, what did he say? He said, behold, the Lamb of God. Behold, he recognized him as our Passover. We don't have to celebrate the Jewish feast we get to under grace. And this year I find it significant that our Good Friday is the beginning of our Jewish friends Passover. It's on the same day. So those of you that love the Lord, I would encourage you on Good Friday, have a little Seder meal at your house. Have a time of prayer with your family. Remember what Jesus did, but remember that it went all the way back to the children of Israel, that it began with a lamb and the death angel had to pass over. He was the fulfillment of our Passover. In the Seder feast, there are four cups of Passover. The first was the cup of sanctification. All would drink of this cup. The next was the cup of judgment. Deuteronomy 26 verse 8, so the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm, with great terror and with signs of wonder. As you know, there are 10 drops into a saucer representing the fact that Christ bore our judgment. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that blood-soaked cross, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. That's what the prophet Isaiah would say. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. When you take of the bread and the blood, it represents healing. And I don't need healing today, but I know Rashonda Bentley's father does. I know Brad Tucker's father does. And when I take mine today, I'm declaring healing over them because that is what God called me to do in the middle of the night. I'm believing for their healing. But for those of you watching or in the house who are sick or have family that's sick, when you take of the bread and you take of the blood, you need to be thinking of God's healing power. Yes, his forgiving power. Yes, his unifying power. Oh, but his healing power. His healing power. The third was the cup of praise. If you've ever seen this, it's so neat. The children go look for the afikoman and it's in a, a linen cloth with three compartments and one is hidden and the child finds it and then the broken piece he feeds to the rest of the family and then everyone drinks the third cup of the Passover. This is the forerunner to communion. The fourth cup is the Elijah cup. That's why I believe in Revelation what I've been teaching you is that Elijah is one of those end time witnesses because in Jewish culture, he's the one they're looking for. And I believe he makes an appearance there. You don't have to agree with that, but we can debate it later. Child asks to go see if Elijah's at the door. That's how Passover ends. They go looking for Elijah. And then all drink of the fourth cup. It's a special time. It's interesting you have the broken bread there, just like we break it as Christians. And you have the three compartments, which I believe represents the Trinity and the three days before Jesus got up out of the grave. I sometimes wonder why our Hebrew friends don't see all the connections in what they do and what we believe, amen? Because it's all there, but they will be 
They will be converted, I believe, during the end times. Those scales will be removed like the Apostle Paul and they will see once and for all that Jesus is the Messiah. He is the fulfillment of every Hebrew prophecy that what he did and what he's coming back for is worth living and dying for. Number four, communion connects us to the kingdom to come. The kingdom to come. It connects us to our roots. Jesus told the disciples, listen, go prepare for me a place so that we can have one last Passover together. That's what they were celebrating. He wanted them to go and find a place. They found the upper room and he is observing this, but in the midst of this, he is prophesying, he is promising that he's going to pay for the sins of humanity. All of that has taken place and the new covenant of communion is implemented in the midst of this. And what did he do? Well, he took the bread and he blessed it. He took the third cup of Passover gave thanks and gave it to them saying, Matthew 26, verse 27, drink from it, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins. One of my favorite verses about the blood, the blood of the new covenant. The old way of doing things isn't going to work anymore. The old covenant laws aren't going to save you anymore. Now there is a new covenant taking place. It has everything to do with the sovereignty of God and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Not your own strength, not the laws you keep, not the religion you uphold. Everything is about grace from this point on. Because Jesus reconnected us to a kingdom that cannot be shaken. He reconnected us to our original intent and purpose. He gave us access into the king's kingdom. And we have access to everything the king has and everything that the king will do. Notice the fourth cup. Jesus did not drink with the disciples. He did not drink the Elijah cup. Why? This is what he says. I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. This has to do with the marriage supper of the Lamb, which I've been leading up to on Wednesday nights, that Jesus Christ is coming back and there's going to be a feast and we'll share that cup with him when we are reunited with him. The first time he's coming back for us, friend. The second time he's coming back with us and we will serve and we will reign and we will rule and we will be an army connected with the king of all kings, the savior of the world, the one that has set you free, forgiven your sins, blessed you, put an anointing on you and changed your life, those of you that know him. Those of you that don't, you need to know him. And then they would close with a hymn, Psalms 113 to 118. They sang it before the feast and after the feast. And then they went out to the Mount of Olives. So today, we celebrate the covenant of communion. And this is what the text says in Corinthians. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, Again, this is the new covenant of my blood, do this and drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let each person examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. In other words, if you take of this bread as a ritual and not revelation, you do a disservice to yourself and you disrespect the kingdom of God. That's why we're to observe and we're to remember and we're to celebrate what Jesus has done for us. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you and many sleep. 
Why? Why and wow. Many among you are sick, many among you are asleep, because they did not observe the body of the Lord and trust the Lord, his body and his blood. For if we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may be not condemned with the world or by the world. Communion should not be just a ritual that you embrace. It should be a revelation that you experience. I believe God wants to heal some people. And listen, I don't care if it's wine, grape juice, a piece of white bread, wheat bread, or a Ritz cracker. I believe if you will envision the beating Jesus Christ took and you will remember the words of the prophet Isaiah, he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we were healed. If you will believe for your healing, I believe God will do it as you take the bread. If you take the blood, I want you to remember about the grace of God. This is the blood of the new covenant, Jesus would say at the Last Supper. Listen, we respect the law, we respect the old covenant, but the new has come, for it is by grace you have been saved. Listen, the gospel of Jesus Christ is not about how good you are, it's about how good Jesus is. So if you need Jesus in your life, why don't you cry out to him right now? Just say, Lord Jesus, Forgive me of my sins. Thank you for dying for me on the cross. I believe in your body. I believe you shed your blood for me. Fill me with your spirit. Save me and use me for your glory. If you prayed a prayer like that, the Bible says your sins are forgiven of you. And I challenge you to go to my website, RonniePhillips.org. Let us know about your experience with Jesus. We want to help you get started in your walk with God. Hey, thank you for all of my friends and partners that partner every month so that we can bring you this broadcast. We love you, we pray for you, and we are believing for new partners this year. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Every day, Ronnie Phillips Ministries International is delivering hope and help around the world through media, missions, and the message of grace. When you partner with RPMI, you're feeding and educating children in the Dominican Republic helping us hold crusades in Central America and other places, and helping families here at home. You're making it possible for us to reach those who need the grace of God and a second chance. Join us in our mission. Your regular monthly partnership makes a world of difference in the impact we can make to reach the world for Christ. Go to RonniePhillips.org to partner with Pastor Ronnie today, or scan the QR code on the screen with your phone. Pastor Ronnie Phillips delivers help and hope around the world through missions, media, and the message of grace. Go online to RonniePhillips.org to partner with Pastor Ronnie today and join us again next week for another message that will help you live free and fully alive.